Okay, what's in this box is my dream camera and probably the most expensive camera I've ever purchased. We are about to do a live unboxing. Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Desmond. I make content for creators that wanna take better photos and shoot better videos. And if you've ever seen my channel before, you know that I don't really do unboxings. But this is a very, very special camera. Um, and I'm going to open it up with you for the first time ever. All right, so as we start to crack this open, I don't know if anyone's got any guesses to what this is. Feel free to drop those in the comments because once this is open, you're gonna know pretty much right away what this is. All right. Ooh. One of the things that I am really happy about, especially when I bought this online, is that this comes in its warehouse packaging. Not only does it come in its original box, it also came in this little pre-protective layer. So that tells me that this shipped right out of the warehouse. This is not a test unit. It is not a floor model. No one has put their hands on this beautiful camera before. And this is the first time we get to see it together. All right, so do we have any guesses as to what this is? I don't know if any of you are familiar with this gray box, but let's go ahead and give you a look. Yes, this is my brand new Leica Q2. I've been looking at this camera for a very long time and I finally decided to pull the trigger. So here it is in all its glory. This is a pretty cool looking box. I mean, pretty standard. Let's open this bad boy right up. I think it does do a very cool unfolding. We're gonna find out. Okay, so this is pretty cool. I've seen the way this box opens before, but let's take a look. Ooh. Oh my God, this looks so nice. All right, let's take this gray box out of here. Whoa. All right, so here we have it. This is my Leica Q2 in this really cool, really nice matte black box. You've got the little monochrome Leica emblem there. Also wanna mention, this is the first Leica I've ever bought. Uh, so this is a very unique and special unboxing experience for me but let's crack this right open. Some of you might even notice too, they're magnets, and that's how this bad boy stays closed. You've got these little magnets here. Really nice, this is like really well-structured cardboard. I mean, I would expect that for the price of this camera, but let's keep moving through it. So if you bring this down, you've got another magnetic door here, and let's see what's in here. All right, we've got our documentation. Eh, well, let's put that aside. I wanna see this little box. So this little box right here, I don't know if y'all can see and I open it up, is all the Leica Q2 accessories. So look at these little accessories here. Everything comes in these beautiful little bags. Um, I don't know, let's crack these open if y'all wanna see me. Let's, let's see, let's see what's in here. I'm not gonna open all of them. I'll open a few so you guys can see what's in here. Huh. Little thread cover ring. Everything is made out of metal. That's really nice. Um, ooh, this will be nice to show. Check this out. This is the leather uh, Leica camera strap. Oh, this is nice. This is much nicer than the one I saw in the pictures. It's pretty low key, very low profile. Take a look here. Just black, got a tiny little logo and this will mount right to the corners of the camera. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put that away. Man, I'm really excited. So this is a beautiful camera. I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube about it. I actually never got a chance to see one of these in person before pulling the trigger and buying, also because this is really hard to get your hands on. Um, but I did end up getting my hands on this and I'm really excited. And then battery, charger, those things are, are all in here. Let's see if I can find the battery battery. I'm going to want this. So batteries in here. Um, for any of you that are familiar with like the Leica system of cameras, the Leica Q2 uses the same battery and some underlying technology as the Leica SL2, which is Leica's like workhorse. That's their mega professional workhorse camera. Very similar to my A7R4 and like the FX3, if you're familiar with Sony cameras, similar to those like larger bodied versions, but significantly more expensive. Um, 
And here we have the Leica Q2 battery, which is the same battery that they use on the Leica SL2. Very cool. I'll talk a bit about the camera when I unbox it, but you can also see here, this has a rubberized gasket. This allows the camera to be completely weather sealed. So it is water and dust uh, resistant, not waterproof, can't dunk it, but it will really hold itself well in the rain and the elements. All right, Ooh. I'm gonna pull this out. So this is the camera. Look at that beautiful box. Um, before I crack this open, I guess a couple things to share. So like I said, this is my first Leica. I am someone who is traditionally and almost always shot with Sony bodies and I love them and I will continue to shoot with them. What I was personally looking for was a everyday carry camera, something with a full frame sensor smaller than my a7R4 uh, that I could bring with me everywhere. And in all honesty, I really wanted a Leica. So, you know, not really a justification, but I wanted one. So. I got one. <laughs> and another thing, I've always seen the Leica brand and their cameras as something that I would one day own. I've been passionate about photography for, you know, almost 10 years now. I really love the cameras that I use on a regular, but I've just always really wanted one of these. And I would compare, say, a Leica to like a luxury watch, right? It's like, obviously I have my Sony bodies, I've got different lenses that cost significantly less that can do pretty much the same thing, if not better, uh, across the board on a lot of things. But just like an Apple watch tells time, a Rolex can tell time, but there's a build quality aspect of it. There is a brand piece of it. There's a history around it that you can't get from other brands. And that's really the main reason why I bought a Leica. Not because I think that the Q2 is a better photography camera than my a7R4. And they're not really the same type of camera. But if I wanted to take photos, I've got plenty of cameras to do that. And I just really wanted this camera. All right, moving on. I don't really have to justify this purchase to anyone, but in case you were wondering why I spent so much money on a point and shoot camera. Okay, so here we go. Let's take a look. This is coming out fresh, man. I love that. I was really worried that when I bought this online that I would be getting some janky floor model, but this thing is looking fresh straight out of the box. Let's throw that away. I'm gonna move this. You know what, let's close you. Whew. Man, look at that. Let me just give you a 360 view of this beautiful camera. Honestly, it is a tiny bit heavier than I expected it to be, which is really cool because this thing is obviously made from a solid piece of metal. So let me walk through some of the tech specs. I will do a full review on this once I've had a chance to shoot with it, but tech specs on this bad boy. This is a 47 megapixel, 47.6, megapixel CMOS sensor. This is the same underlying sensor technology that they use in the Leica SL2, which is also why I thought this was a great value because the Leica SL2 body is about 6,800, probably over $7,000 with tax, but you still get that same 47 megapixel sensor, same-ish. On top of that sensor, this bad boy is packing a 28 millimeter F1.8 Sumalux lens. And another really, really interesting piece for me is that the M version of the 28 millimeter Leica lens costs about $7,000. So to have a very, very similar lens to a $7,000 M lens with a very similar sensor to a $7,000 Leica body, the $6,000 after tax I paid for this feels like a steal. Um, I know there's a lot of you out there that are like cringing uh, that do not understand that concept at all. But it feels like a bargain Leica. But again, that is all relative. So if we take a look at this camera, this is a fixed lens. So you're not able to switch this out for anything else. The 28 millimeter lens is the one you get. Luckily for me, I do love shooting at wider focal lengths. One of my favorite lenses is the 35 millimeter. And my second favorite for video is a 20 millimeter. So I think with the 28, I'm going to really enjoy this focal length, especially for everyday shooting, right? Street photography, landscape, shots on adventures, um, everyday use and I'm probably going to be able to do some really cool product photography shots as well because if you notice here this camera has a macro mode hold on ready let me show you this whoa 
check that out. Ready? Macro mode. Oh man, that is so beautiful. That is so smooth. All your shooting modes are pretty standard. You get about 10 frames per second with the mechanical shutter, a little bit more with the electronic shutter. You have a standard on off button here. You've got your shutter control dial here. You control ISO and other elements with this changeable knob in the corner. The big value, and I guess the major selling point of the Leica here is just simplicity. It only has three buttons right here and it's got a little D-pad over here on this side. It is a full touch screen interface, very simple menu. This thing is really designed to turn on, focus and shoot. One of the big differences between the Q2 and say like an M system is the autofocus capability. So again, I wasn't really looking for the traditional Leica experience. I'm not great at manual focus and I wanted something for daily use that was really easy and fun to use. So having autofocus and a really nice wide open 28 millimeter lens is awesome. What you're seeing here is our 28 millimeter Sumalux lens with the included lens hood. So this is a solid metal lens hood. It screws right on. You can hear that. It's so nice. Boom, screws right on, perfectly aligned. This is a beautiful camera. Um, a couple of other things, you can obviously switch this from autofocus to manual focus. There is a ring here. You press the button, you twist, and now it is in manual focus mode, which again gives you that kind of classic Leica experience. I'll probably not be using this very often considering I'm not very good at manual focus and I rely heavily on autofocus, especially someone who loves the Sony autofocus system. Not really as important, but some of you might be wondering, this thing does shoot video 4K up to 30 frames per second. I'll probably be shooting 4K 24 frames per second. It has some beautiful colors, does not shoot in any type of log. So you can choose a cinematic color profile and the colors are what they are out of camera and that's totally fine. I'm not planning to shoot all my YouTube videos on this little Leica, um, but it will be cool to capture like videos for social, random things around the house, things when I go out, if I don't wanna bring my FX3 or any of my larger cameras, knowing that this thing not only takes beautiful, incredible photos, but can shoot pretty decent video is honestly enough for me. I'll have my ZV-1 with me for any vlogging or real video making needs, but I think this will be great regardless. And here's some interesting things you'll want to know about this particular camera. You can see here why this is probably going to be a terrible video centric camera is that there are absolutely no ports, no audio jack, no HDMI output, no charging ports. This thing, once you've installed the battery, is completely sealed. And again, the lack of ports is a design decision, right? It makes this thing a lot more robust. It is water and dust sealed. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that there are no additional holes or entries. You've got a little SD card, reader spot that goes there. And that's ultimately it, battery. Click. As I mentioned earlier, this battery is completely sealed. So you plug that in and there you go. Your camera is ultimately ready to go. And we can just turn this on. What? Look at that intro. I mean, come on. That's amazing. All right. And that's it for my unboxing. I'm gonna get off this and start setting this up. I will come back with a full review once I've had a chance to really play with this beautiful camera. Let me know in the comments what you think. I mean, obviously there are gonna be a bunch of people out there. They're gonna tell me how ridiculous it is to have spent this kind of money knowing that I could have bought, I don't know, another a7 IV, two a7 IVs, an a7C, anything in the Sony lineup. I probably could have switched to a whole other system like Canon and still purchased enough lenses and prime lenses to go with, you know, an R5. But this is 